Today on BRS TV Investigates, do different calcium reactor medias provide the same amount of alkalinity and calcium to your tank? Hi, I'm Randy, a host for the YouTube series BRS TV Investigates, where we take popular reefing theories and put them to the test. Today we've got a quick experiment to test the question, do different types of calcium reactor medias have different max saturation points? Meaning, regardless of the type of calcium reactor media you use in your calcium reactor, when you peg the pH set point inside the reactor, will the effluent or solution you dose to the tank have the same concentration? Although there is a relatively small handful of popular calcium reactor media options out there that reefers choose to use on their systems, there are still looming questions as to which option is the best. Well, as we come to learn in several times over in this hobby, trying to define the term best is almost nearly impossible because at its core, best doesn't mean the same to every reefer. So when it comes to choosing the best calcium reactor media for an individual's personal desires, perhaps a decision could be made on the lowest cost, size options, highest purity, or where the media was sourced from, dissolvability, amount of major, minor, trace elements they provide, or even just by popularity and longest history of users overall. In either case, there's definitely more information we can learn about the various calcium reactor medias we use in our reactors, and to start peeling back the layers of the onion, we hope to first determine how the most popular options perform on the most basic level of their intended use, which is the max saturation or concentration level they produce at similar pH set points. Armed with this information, we can begin to get a clearer picture into choosing the right tool for the job. In order to test today's question, we'll take the data that we gathered in a previous BRS TV Investigates experiment where we tested the max saturation of the reactor effluent solution by testing the alkalinity concentration coming out of the reactor at common pH set points of 6.4 and 6.8 at very slow flow rates of 5 mils per minute and apply the same experiment to two other popular calcium reactor media options of somewhat similar size and grade with the Carib Sea Arm Course Media and Brightwell's Coral Lazarus. We'll peg the calcium reactor pH at 6.4 and 6.8 for each media and let them recirculate 24 hours with a slow flow rate of 5 mils per minute running through the reactor, then test the effluent after each point to determine the max saturation. Before we get into the results for this test, let's look at these three media types on the table where we can see the Two Little Fishies Reborn media is absolutely small bits of porous coral skeleton in a variety of shapes. The Carib Sea Arm and Coral Lazarus are evenly shaped and sized aragonite media, yet the Coral Lazarus has a slightly smaller granule size. Okay, let's look at the data for all three reactor medias where the reactor pH was set to 6.4 with a flow rate at very slow 5 mils per minute. After a full 24 hours of each media, running at this low range pH, we see the Two Little Fishies Reborn Media Max Alkalinity Concentration Test at an average of 40.4 dKH, Brightwell's Coral Lazarus shows an average reading of 37.6, and Carib Sea Arm Course Media tests at an average of 35.6 dKH. So we're starting to see a couple of things here. First, although the Brightwell and Carib Sea seem to be very similar types of media, it looks like the slight difference in size of media creates more surface area for the CO2 to dissolve, which at face value seems to provide 5% more concentration at the same pH set point. Secondly, we can also see that the calcium carbonate coral skeleton media from Two Little Fishies showed a 7% higher max saturation to the coral Lazarus and a 12% higher concentration than the Carib Sea Arm media. Let's see if there were similar results at the higher pH set point of 6.8 with the same 5 mil per minute flow rate in each media running for a full 24 hours. Starting with our Two Little Fishies Reborn, we see an average alkalinity concentration of 22.8 dKH. The Brightwell Coral Lazarus comes in at 19.4, while the Carib Sea Arm finishes the test at 19.2 dKH. Again, we're seeing a difference between the media types and what looks like media size, which is surprisingly more pronounced with 15% more concentration between the Reborn and Coral Lazarus and 16% increase from the Carib Sea Arm media. However, there is a less pronounced difference in the similar aragonite type of medias at this pH at only 1%. So do different types of calcium reactor medias have different max saturation points? Well, from the data that we've gathered here today, I'll actually put this one right in the middle out of five, since there clearly is a difference between the reborn calcium carbonate skeletal media at both pH points to the other aragonite type of medias. However, the subtle differences between the coral Lazarus and the arm media is challenging to chalk up to the media itself, 
or simply the size and surface area differences between them. What did we learn here today and how can we apply it to our own reef tanks at home? Well, there are actually a couple of notable points for me. If I can gain 15% or more in max concentration from choosing the right type of calcium reactor media, that not only means it will provide more alkalinity and calcium to my tank at a lower dosage amount, but parallel to that, because I don't need to dose as much, I can likely expect less of an overall impact to my tank's pH level overall. Also, if I have a media that has a higher level of concentration threshold, along with dosing less to achieve the same results, dosing less inherently also means less wear and tear on my equipment, such as lowering running speeds on my continuous duty dosing pump, which equates to longer pump life and less maintenance frequency. Just for fun and to get the idea of the cost differences between these calcium reactor media options, I weighed each one and looked at their current price to get an idea of the cost per pound for each one. The two little fishies reborn weighed in at exactly 8.8 .8 pounds as listed on the packaging and at its current price of $35.66 works out to be $4.05 per pound. The Brightwell Coral Lazarus bag weighed in at 11.23 pounds with a $36.99 price tag for a total of $3.29 per pound, while the jug of Carib Sea Arm Coarse Media weighed in at 10.75 pounds and at 29.99 makes it the most economical choice at 279 per pound. As I mentioned in the beginning about trying to define what the best calcium reactor media is, best is pretty subjective from one reefer to another and directly related to how each personally values what's best for them. Finding one media that is head and shoulders above all others in every aspect of what reefers value the most is highly unlikely. Strictly speaking from a cost standpoint of what we've seen here today, the best could very well be the Carib C R media as you get more for what you pay for. However, alternatively to that, if the media's max saturation capabilities is the highest value, then we could argue that Two Little Fishies Reborn media is the best. So with that in mind, there are more value points that we can test for between the various calcium reactor media options, such as differences between granule sizes, or even the more hotly debated topic of trace elements that calcium reactor media types may or may not add back into the tank and more. So we plan to continue our experiments on calcium reactor media types with tests like if magnesium media really works and to what degree, ICP testing of media effluent to see if trace elements exist, ways to better decrease the pH impact of the calcium reactor and others. One of the biggest questions I see surrounding calcium reactors comes from those reefers who are ready to take the plunge into the calcium reactor world by changing over from a standard two-part dosing method. So I can definitely see how this can seem like a daunting task, especially for those who haven't really been introduced to the calcium reactors or how they work, or even for those who have invested a lot of time and cost into their display tank, where disrupting the tank's stability is of the utmost concern. In either case, Ryan makes it super easy to understand how to make the change from two-part dosing to using a calcium reactor by showing us how to use the right tool to do the job properly in his video where he walks us through using an online calculator to determine the exact calcium reactor settings you'll need to match your current two-part dose and make the entire process safe and easy to do on your own tank. See you next time on BRS TV Investigates.